Well, hello there. I think I've nailed this bang on 11 a.m. PST. So that's the first good thing. Let's do some checks first. First of all, can you hear me and can you see me? And once we confirm that, then I can say hello to you all and do some shout outs. So let's see. Can I be heard here? Yes, Cookie Man Boy. Fantastic username. You can hear me. That's brilliant. So hello, everyone. Welcome to this first live stream on vidIQ of 2018, a slightly delayed one because I was traveling for the first week of the year, but here I am now. And as I said in the live stream at the end of last year, we're going to be doing a lot more of these throughout the whole of 2018 here on vidIQ. And I'm going to try and feel my way into these live streams, so we'll do some kind of laid back a relaxed one, see which is the best time to do the live stream, what time of day, what day of the week, and I'd really appreciate your feedback on that. But before we go any further, let's do some shout outs. There's already plenty of people on this live stream. So hello to you, BC Truck Rebuild, Repair and Repurpose. That's a long um, username, but fantastic to hear that you're in the live stream. You've posted some really fantastic comments on the channel recently about successes. Very well done to you, sir. Uh, SKG, SGK Funny Friends, hello to you. Uh, Libertad Financiera para todos, for some long usernames here. Hello to you. Tech to Review, HD Gamer, even Shrauf. Have I got your surname right there? I think you were the uh, MVP of the last live stream. Uh, so hello to you. Musical Raj, uh, Amanda's Allotment, hey there to you. Why be hustle? Let's do this, indeed. BDV, hello, Dr. DT Fishboat, uh, Gamers Nation, Chris Fezzer, wow, there's a lot of uh, people here on this live stream, thank you very much, uh, Neelish Fatnani, uh, again, I always apologise if I butcher anybody's usernames, uh, but I'm just reading them as quickly as I can, I must say so far though, the best username we have here on the vidIQ live stream is Cookie Man Boy, I, I love that one, uh, and finally, Processions or Agdes Files. I'm sorry, that's completely wrong. Extra Sessions Media, what's up to you as well? Uh, so yeah, welcome all of you to this um, half-organized live stream. I've got a couple of notes here about the general things that I'm going to go through in this live stream, but it's kind of for you to um, just chat and hang out here on this weekend, uh, well, this near weekend day, because uh, what is it, of course, as you know, it is that Friday feeling. And I'm feeling it today, guys. I am chilled out, relaxed, ready to look forward to the weekend with these glasses, which make me look a bit like Stevie Wonder. So maybe I should take these off. But uh, I'm sure somebody's going to ask about these glasses because I'm always um, have the query of where do I get these from. If you just Google CNC Finland... Uh, Fug Life glasses, I'm sure they'll appear uh, somewhere. Uh, but yeah, I'm having that Friday feeling. So uh, are you guys having that free Friday feeling? Has the weekend already started for you? Uh, let me quickly know what you intend to do uh, for the weekend. Uh, I've just got back from tra some traveling. So I'm going to be relaxing this weekend with a couple of f movies and maybe a pizza. So very quickly, let me know how you're going to spend your weekend. Northern Exotics, sounds like you're going to endure a uh, pretty tough weekend because you've got a 17-hour shift tomorrow. Wow. Uh, what does that entail? Uh, I don't envy you. Uh, Ethan Schrauf is going heli skiing in Alaska. Pretty cool. Where are you from, Ethan? Do you live in Alaska? Uh, Vancouver's kind of nearer. Well, it's still about 1,000 miles away from Alaska, but... Uh, Gamers Nation, you're going to be editing all weekend long. Cool. Is that a gaming video that you're going to be editing? How long does it take you to uh, tr typically uh, edit your videos? Why be hustle? Simple. is just going to get drunk. As long as, long as you do that responsibly, I'm okay with that. Um, Teg Patrick, it's uh, Saturday for you now. So that probably means that you are in, I would guess, New Zealand, Australia. Uh Nellish is going to be doing a video shoot with your team for, da for your Darson's Fitness business. Excellent stuff there. Good luck with that. And uh, Dusting Vang, you're here in North Charlotte, North Carolina. Hello there. What are you going to be doing uh, this weekend? 
And uh, wow, Northern Exotics has scheduled five videos for next week. So obviously he's doing a 17 hour shift to, while he's uh, editing, well, preparing videos, which is pretty good. Uh, so, oh, Teg Patrick is from India. So it's just gone the weekend for you. Uh, so thanks for staying up late here on this uh, vidIQ live stream. So yeah, as I say, uh, this is kind of a little unstructured, kind of a little unplanned. We're just going to go through a, a couple of bullet points, but I'm here to chat to you guys and um, get you comfortable with these live streams as we're going to be doing a lot more of them. Uh, the one thing I am going to tell you is that at the end of this live stream, towards the end, I'm going to do at least two channel audits. So if you stick around, I'm going to hopefully bring up your channel on screen and we can have a look at a little bit, a couple of things on your channel and see if we can offer any advice on how to improve it. So that's a, one of the structured things that we're going we're gonna to do here. Uh, so yeah. Now, I think uh, one of the things I'm also going to do is um, try and get some moderators for this vidIQ chat in the future because uh, somebody is not posting some nice messages. So if you can uh, uh, maybe report them if you can. It's it looks fine. It looks as if it's been um, edited out here on the chat, but that, so that's great. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll we'll look at this uh, getting a more formulated structure, and maybe you guys can help out and create a community here on vidIQ for when we do these live streams. Hello to you, Alejandro Tuba. It's one six one six minutes past one there in Costa Rica. Uh, is it warm down there right now? We, we'll be. Uh, Lovely to know there. Uh, so, uh, one thing we're to, well, a couple of things we're going to look at in this um, live stream. It's probably going to be about an hour. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to be half an hour or an hour, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's already taken me 10 minutes to do the introduction. Um, we're going to look at a couple of things that we've done on the channel this week on vidIQ. Um, and we've only done two videos this week because, as I said, I was traveling last week, so I uh, had to stack up some videos uh, in the schedule and then post them. And then we're going to look at two new stories that I posted on our social media channels. Uh, obviously, it's vidIQ, at vidIQ for Twitter, which if I get my finger right there, look at that. I'm pointing at my Twitter handle, which is brilliant. And uh, also on Facebook, where we are v, um, vidIQ. And uh, then after uh, looking at those two things, so a channel, looking at the channel and looking at some new stories, we'll do those channel audits. So what have we done here on vidIQ uh, this week? At the start of a week, we looked at playlists, something that's very much underutilized by YouTubers and not many people concentrate on those, um, on the aspect of, uh, YouTube. So uh, just before we look at a little more detail of uh, what I talked about in the playlist, did you watch that video? Kind of interested to know if people who are on the live stream are also watching the videos that we do on a, a regular basis. Did you watch the uh, video about playlists? Let me know in the comments. I'm just waiting for you, some of you to update. Uh, Northern Exotics, you did watch it. Brilliant. Thank you very much for watching it. And uh, Amanda's allotment, you've also been uh, concentrating on playlists as well. So hopefully you'll have picked up some of those tips. A lot of people saying they did watch the video. So that's brilliant to know. So we don't have to spend too much on it. But just to kind of uh, review some of the things we did on that video. And I'm just going to quickly switch to it now. And hopefully this is, again, a bit of practice to make sure I get my transitions right. So hopefully now you can see the screen here. And I won't be able to see your chat at this point, so maybe save your comments for when I'm uh, back on screen. But yeah, we looked at 10 tips on how to improve uh, your YouTube channel through playlists. And perhaps one of the most important things I mentioned in that uh, video, if I can hopefully find it on screen somewhere. Let's see if this is going to work, because whenever I do a live stream, it makes my computer go really slowly. But there we are, if I can just bring that up. Uh, when you post a video, YouTube cre cre obviously treats that as new content. But when you upload a video and add it to a playlist or create a new playlist, creating a new playlist is like creating a new video. It's, it's kind of treated as new content ID by YouTube. So let's say you upload a video on Monday you create a playlist on Wednesday 
and then you upload another video on Friday, YouTube treats that as three different pieces of content. And obviously for consistency and frequency, YouTube's algorithm will give you a extra bonus credit. Again, we, we're looking at small marginal gains here on any YouTube channel. So if you're looking at creating a new playlist, create a playlist on a different date than you upload the video and create playlists often. Just make sure that they have relevance and you're not just creating playlists with one video. They have to have more than one video in and they need to appeal to users to click on them. Other things we looked at on playlists is that when you're sharing video links, you should try and share the playlist link rather than the video link. For example, right now, this is the video link. But if I go to my playlist and then collect one of the playlist link, we'll see how it looks different on the page. So let's just go into demonetization, for example, something that's been a hot topic here on vidIQ recently. And if I click on that there, that should hopefully load up the page. What you will see here at the top is that the URL looks very different than a normal YouTube watch video link. And that's because we're now in the playlist ecosystem of the video and when it finishes loading up what I should be able to show you is if I just pause that because we don't want to actually watch the video you can see now that when we have the uh, playlist links here so what's going to happen is that instead of jumping to a random other video which might not be our own YouTube will choose that suggested video it will move on to the next video in the playlist so that means that you're benefiting from all the watch time and all the session watch time as opposed to a normal video link where you might not benefit from it. Uh, other things I, I talked about with playlist tips is that you should uh, make sure you put in a lot of metadata on your playlist. So give it a good title and a description as you can see here uh, because these playlists are indexed by YouTube and they can be searched for. So again, that gives you the opportunity to have your videos found through search. And also uh, don't forget that there are many playlist settings where you can change the order of the videos in the playlist and allow uh, collaborators on your videos to adjust the playlist if you need to. So that was the video there looking at um, playlists. And if you haven't already watched it, then please do so. And um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of things to look at there uh, as regards to playlists. Now, uh, have you been uh, using these tips on your playlist? Have you been finding your own playlists uh, performing on YouTube? I'd really uh, love to uh, know about your uh, thoughts on playlists. Uh, just while I wait for some of your comments, somebody's talking about uh, session watch time, Amanda's allotment. Uh, sessions, session watch time is when people watch one of your videos, they enter YouTube through one of your videos, so you start a session watch time for a user, and then they continue in YouTube and watch other videos. If they stay in YouTube for three hours, then you benefit from a session watch time because you brought the viewer into YouTube, which is always a brilliant thing. Uh, so now, let's have a look at what other people are talking about. HD Gamer, I don't have a series. You mean a playlist series? You should definitely have one if you can. Um, yeah, HD Gamer, it's, you're missing out there. You should really use the opportunity to create playlists. And another thing that's really good about playlists is that it allows you to build up your welcome homepage on your desktop. And you should be using that to really promote viewers to watch different parts of your video, show off your best videos. Um, because without playlists, then your homepage will look a little bland. Uh, why be hustle? Yeah, you need to hustle and do more uh, playlists if you can. I seem to get extended views from my playlist. So there we are, Kitchen Confidence. You're uh, validating what we say here on vidIQ. Uh, Extra Sessions Media. I've been running playlists since day one. We have a multi-language channel, so it's 100% necessary. So yeah, uh, there we have uh, necessity, really, if you're having multi-language channels, spotting more than one language, which is fantastic and uh, a lot of uh, credit to you. 
uh, our guest playlist would be absolutely essential there. Uh, one last question then, DT Fishbow, is there a way to get a playlist bump when you're red- regularly add- adding to previously created playlists? I think that has less of an influence, but obviously you want to be adding videos to your existing playlist because once a viewer is in your playlist, then more videos might keep them there. But uh, creating new playlists is definitely an advantage because YouTube is treating it as new content. Okay, so uh, that's a quick look at playlists and thank you again for all your uh, wonderful comments there on that area. The other video we looked at this week and I recently uploaded it and I've just left it on the perfect uh, screenshot here is when I press the right buttons is this one which was YouTube revenue being down in 2018 obviously we're only two weeks into 2018 and I'd love to know your thoughts on whether you suffered a revenue hit in 2018 so far but obviously save your comments until I can see them on screen. Uh, But this is an example of how revenue radically changes from one month to the next. So November, December, uh, we're looking at revenue here, which is obviously has its peaks and troughs, but it's relatively high in comparison to January and February, where it tanks around about 50 to 60 percent. Now, this doesn't happen to every channel. It will affect other channels more than others, but Uh, For example, a tech channel or a a video game channel will probably be hit massively by this YouTube revenue downturn in January. And the reason for that is pretty simple. When do you spend all your money? You probably probably spend all your money in the run-up to Christmas. When do advertisers spend all their money? Exactly the same time, running up to Christmas. So the second quarter of the year, or second half of the year, most of the advertising dollars will go into that period of time. And then in January, everybody's got credit card bills. The budgets probably for advertisers haven't been fully established yet. There may be some advertising budget for what you might call New Year's resolutions. So like um, people who have weight loss channels may see an upturn in revenue because of that particular time of the year. But generally speaking, you will suffer a downturn in revenue and there's not much you can do about that unless you're all of a sudden getting a lot more views then obviously that will affect your revenue but this is why a lot of youtubers have second incomes from their channels uh, well more than more than one second income and i'm just going to try and find the page here so i can show you that uh, there we are let's go and transition back to the browser so here are a couple of ideas of how uh, channels will get money from other sources other than AdSense revenue. So they might have individual brand deals where you might see a promotion for a product at the beginning of a video or at the end or um, intermixed with the video itself. And those are what you might call brand deals. Then we have av- affiliate links where people might talk about a product and say, if you want to buy this product, I've got an affiliate link below in the description and they might get a 10% or 20% kickback on that. Another form of income for people who really don't want to rely on AdSense is Patreon, whereby you're actually asking viewers to support your channel financially outside of YouTube to help you continue to produce YouTube comments, uh, YouTube uh, content. And of course, there's merchandising as well, which is very big for YouTubers such as, dare I say it, somebody who's been in the news a lot recently, Jake and Logan Paul. They do make a lot of money on merchandising, whether or not they're going to make any money on AdSense revenue because of recent misdemeanors. So I'd love to hear your thoughts here on uh, how your YouTube revenue has been affected and do you have other sources of income? I know that um, BC Truck, he posted a a really good comment on uh, his video, on one of our videos recently, well, the video that I've just shown you, that he had a fantastic December, made an astronomical amount of um, revenue in terms of previous uh, income. And um, now it's, so he he just posted here that it was $11 during peak Christmas rush. Now it's back down to $2. So that's a drop of about 80, 90%, which is really huge. Um, But yeah, it can really affect uh, channels in a a big way. 
what else have we got here? Brand deals and affiliate links are worth so much more than ads. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, some channels are built on selling their products off off of YouTube. Like, for example, if you ever watch any of Tim Schmoyer's uh, content, he has built a business around uh, people going on his courses and buying his books, which are there to help YouTubers, but he's not really necessarily interested in the AdSense revenue that he can make from it. Uh, so what else have we, do we have here? We've got um, Dan, a simulation with Daniel asking that we should add tags to this live stream. You know, that's one of the things that I haven't worked out how to do yet on uh, my live stream page. I can't work out how to add like, tags there. Or I haven't looked at it properly, but you are absolutely right. That's something I do need to do on these live streams. So that's one thing I've learned. Thank you uh, for the feedback there. Uh, I will certainly try and add tags in the future. Uh, Outlaws Generation. I can't get an Amazon affiliate. Don't know uh, why. I probably need 10K subs. Yes, uh, I think Amazon are getting a lot more involved in the affiliate program. I think they've recently launched in, at the end of last year, Amazon Influencers, where they're trying to nab some of uh, YouTube's uh, native content for where people are sharing their affiliate links. So that's certainly somewhere in the future you might want to look to if you're wanting to generate revenue. And um, what else? Uh, let's see. So some complaints going on here that we need to mute somebody. Okay, uh, bear with me one second and I will try and do that now. Uh, let's see. This may take a little while though because whenever I try and do a live stream, actually going onto the live stream page really slows down my computer. Uh, but let's see if we can do that. And I will do exactly as you request because I'm listening to you guys. So this guy, Ollie Coles, who's... Uh, I shouldn't be drawing attention to him, but he is saying egg, egghead quite a lot, which is absolutely hilarious. I do know that. Uh, but what's also hilarious is that I have the power to put a user or hide the user's comments from the channel, which I've just done. So hopefully we shouldn't be seeing any more from him, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, but thank you very much for the feedback, guys. And uh, I will do it. If anybody wants to be a moderator, actually, now, while I'm on the screen, let me know and I will add you as a moderator and I will really appreciate that. And um, you can help me moderate because it's very difficult to moderate comments while I'm in the live stream. Uh, so a couple of people, uh, who wants to be one? Dustin Vang. Okay, a couple of people are suggesting they would like to be moderators. But as I'm trying to click on you, <laughs> the, the chat is disappearing. That's really frustrating. Uh, let's see if I can help. Okay, uh, the moderator. I think you are now moderator there. Extra sessions, and somebody else would want it to be one. Um, this isn't. This is terrible for the live stream. By the way, it's like uh, being on radio and talking about something that nobody can see. Uh, but I will just add one more person as a moderator. And there we are. So I've added two people as moderators. Thank you very much, you two. And um, I really do appreciate it. Sorry if nobody else has been added as a moderator. I'll try and do that in the future. Uh, but yeah, just trying to quickly sort things out there. At least we've got some moderators on there. So where are we? We're 25 minutes into this live stream now. And before we move on to the next topic, which was a couple of news stories, let's just do some Hangout chat. So if you've got any sort of general questions or any comments, We've got five minutes, kind of like a, as a break here from the somewhat structure. Um, let, let's chat. So, yeah, thank you, Dustin Vang. Uh, you've got my back. I really do appreciate that. Um, somebody saying uh, Pocket Profit free trial on the Boost subscription. What, for moderators? Do you think I should do that? Uh, maybe I will do. Why do some videos blow up and some don't? I think that's the eternal question. I can't really answer that in uh, very shortly, but I did an excellent uh, case study on this where a channel called CZ's World, which is relatively small, 10,000 subscribers, blew up with enormous uh, view counts, millions, and his channel grew about a thousand percent. Watch that video and it gives you an insight into how a, a video can go viral. Basically, it was awesome content, awesome keywords, and it was like a perfect uh, triangle of all these things coming together to produce a brilliant uh, video and he's really benefited from it. Uh, how did you come up with the name vidIQ? What is the IQ of videos? Ender Keenan is asking this. 
so I we would have to ask uh, the the founder of vidIQ for why it was called vidIQ, but don't you think that's just like a really, I guess, intelligent name? Forgive the pun. Like uh, we're giving you an IQ on every video that's on YouTube, trying to rate it in terms of its SEO, its uh, performance, engagement. So I think that's generally the idea of where vidIQ came up, came from. Uh, somebody saying pick up the volume. Are you saying that the volume is not quite right? Al on Vlog TV. Does the volume need to be up a little more? I'd appreciate it uh, if you'd let me know. Uh, Westerin, I've been using vidIQ for two years now. Amazing software. Thanks for making it. Uh, now, when I read out these comments, I'm not really uh, vetting them before I do so. I'm not just I'm not just reading that out because it's a really nice thank you big plug vidIQ. Uh, so, yeah, uh, sorry about that. Uh, let's see. So when are we going to do that channel review? We're going to do it at the end of the live stream. And when that finishes, when we come to the end, we'll find out. I mean, we'll be going for 25 minutes now. I'm around about halfway through the uh, live stream. So you do the math. So some people are saying that the microphone audio is a bit low. So what about now? I'm just bringing up the microphone audio here. Does it sound louder and does it sound better uh, do let me know on that um I suppose i should check just check i'll just i'll just do one check here is the volume coming from this microphone uh yes the answer is i think it is some people say good perfect much better thank you okay thanks you see this is one of the good things about live stream uh you are vulnerable to all your mistakes but then you guys can really help me out and i hope one of the things that i hope one of the things this does is inspire you to do live streaming if you've never done it before it can be a bit chaotic there's a lot of things to it a lot of variables but it can be so rewarding as well especially when i'm um getting all this wonderful feedback from you and if you watched my video about how to inspire yourself in 2018. That's one of the things I said. Uh, if you've never done live streaming before, just do it. YouTube uh, really likes you doing live streams. Like there's 50 people watching now, which is brilliant. And if you're all sending all these hundreds of messages and like for every minute that we're talking here, I'm getting 50 minutes of watch time for vidIQ, which is brilliant as well. So yeah, live streaming, if you can do it, is well worth doing. Um, so, yep, yeah, thank. I, I like it. I've started doing live streams. Good for you, Northern Exotics. I hope you're doing that before your 17-hour shift. Um, you said, what are the benefits? I've just said there, the fact that we're getting lots of watch time here by, these, by 50 people watching this live stream right now. And if you ever look at your analytics after a live stream, just look at how the comments are affected. They jump like hundreds of percent because everybody's just uh, commenting all the time. But yeah, HD Gamer smash that like button i do appreciate that um dusting vang i did a live stream noodle challenge it was rough i can imagine it was uh kitchen confidence asks should you live stream even without a strong sub base like i have under 40 subs at the moment but want to try live saving i think the answer is you should never you should never be restricted by your sub count don't let that affect you uh if you want to try something new just do it if you're only talking to two people on that live stream well, that's more than nobody. And you can learn a lot of things, even if it's just practicing. So when you're a bigger channel, you've learned all these things and you're uh, re ready to uh, take this on. Like I'm practicing live streaming now, and this is probably my third or fourth live stream. And I'm still making a lot of mistakes and there's still a lot of things I need to learn about it. But I'm glad that I'm doing it now, just in case we have 200 people in a live stream in, in the future. At least I've prepared with all of you guys, which is brilliant. And one thing I'm forgetting to do while I do this live stream is to drink. I was going to, I told myself I would drink more water on this live stream and I forgot to do it. And I'm going to do it out of this vidIQ goblet of fire. So yeah, don't be afraid to have a pause and have a drink is uh, one of the bits of advice I would give you. Um, so another question, Outlaw, we'll do a few more questions and I'll get into the next part of the live stream. Rob, what is it good for social media to get loads of shares? I think the um, one that works the best is Reddit, but you shouldn't be going into Reddit yourself to promote your content. It needs to be shared by somebody who's not really associated with your content and just posts it in one of the Reddits or subreddits where it can then get shared and it goes ballistic. 
Uh, Twitter's another good way of doing it. But again, the problem with Twitter, Twitter and Facebook is that they're kind of competing social media platforms. So do Twitter and Facebook really want you leaving their platforms, going to YouTube? Not really. So uh, you really will want to be posting native videos on both of those platforms. Like with Twitter, you can do maybe a 30 second intro to a video that then points to YouTube. Facebook, we obviously have a syndication tool so we can send YouTube videos directly to Facebook. Um, but I don't know if you've noticed in our videos, if you've been on Twitter and Facebook, I do them in a slightly different way. I add subtitles because a lot of people watching Twitter and Facebook videos don't have a sound on, so you've got to put on subtitles. So it adds an ad added layer of complication, but obviously as a uh, professional company, that's something that we need to do to really cater to our, our audiences. And I appreciate that that can be difficult when you're a single outfit on YouTube, just trying to push out videos in your spare time. Uh, so what else do we have? Uh, why do we get low money on January? Uh, I've just answered that uh, about 10 minutes earlier. So you might want to rewatch uh, this video a live stream in the past, um, once I've done it. Uh, one more question then. Um, Christopher Duxbury, do you ever share the content of vidIQ users on Reddit or would you ever do it as a small, small bonus giveaway as a way to boost them and you? Haven't really tried. I've In my previous life on another channel where I um, make videos, whenever I've shared videos to Reddit, they've always been immediately removed from the reddit or the um comments and responses have been a bit negative and i guess it's just because i'm not part of the communities where i've been posting those comments so really if you are going to be posting on reddit try and become an established member of the community on whatever reddit you are before you share those posts but again that takes a lot of time so i can appreciate um there may be a lot of effort being put in there to share a video that then doesn't do very well anyway so it's kind of one of those really difficult things to say about reddit and i haven't really had any success on it so uh maybe i'm not the best person to ask on that but i'm sure there's uh other videos on youtube which might give you better advice on how to share on reddit okay let's move on to two new stories then that i uh, picked up here on uh, youtube over the last week and now i'm not going to go near the logan paul controversy because there's been all sorts of stuff said about it already and i posted a, a quick tweet at the start of the week saying that we, we shouldn't really be concentrating on, on the on the trad on the controversy but more about the topic that was in the video which is suicide uh, prevention awareness and that's the only thing that i was really interested in in that controversy so i'm not the uh, focusing on that at all. Uh, what I am going to look at, though, on one of the story is, stories is the attempted return yet again of the video glasses. Now, last year, or was it the year before? I can't quite remember. Snapchat released their video glasses, which absolutely tanked. And apparently there's thousands of these glasses now sitting in uns unsold in Chinese warehouses, as we see on this uh, news article here. But this is about a new Snapchat style spectacles, but it should work on multi-platform compatibility. Uh, so this is where things get more interesting. Ace Eyewear, and they say that these uh, glasses will work on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Snapchat. And the price, uh, pre-ordering a pair, would only cost you $99. I think they uh, run at 8 megapixels and there was a record time of 90 minutes and you could live stream as well. So that does sound more exciting to me as a um, application or an accessory for um, broadcasting videos. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you would think on such a pair of glasses. Would you be interested in wearing them and using them uh, to broadcast videos my thoughts are that for vlogging i'm not sure they would be that good because obviously like we're just going to use these glasses as an example uh, obviously the footage that people are seeing is what's in front of you and with a vlog the character of a person doing the vlogs is usually central to that for example casey neistat uh he's always got the camera uh, like a couple of inches of a couple of feet away from him and 
him wearing the glasses and being the persona is very much a focal point of the vlogs. What I think they would be useful for is unboxings, where you, again, have the glasses on and you're, you have a product in front of you and you're actually seeing the products from the viewpoint of a person doing a review. I think that really has potential. But again, if you're like a tech reviewer, the one thing you always want is high quality video. Obviously, that's part of your remit, being a tech um, blogger, uh, tech reviewer. And I think glasses at $99 are probably not going to be that high quality. But I'd love to hear your uh, your thoughts. Uh, so Dustin Vang says, unless you're vlogging in front of a mirror, that's going to be quite difficult to vlog in front of a mirror for a, the entirety of the video. Or if you're carrying a mirror around, I could see them being problems there. Um, let's see. I think they would have be good for a ride on amusement. So yeah, absolutely. There are ways that they could certainly be used for it almost turns it into a virtual reality type of a point of view camera uh, so that would be a very interesting way of uh, using it um ender keenan saying i should use the glasses on video gadgets journal that's a different channel but yeah I, uh, that's the other channel i occasionally run uh, but yeah i could see how they could be useful on a tech channel uh, and Kitchen Confidence says using glasses like those would require slow head movements and deliberate motion. So I, I didn't even think about that. It's a brilliant point. And yes, excellent. Otherwise, headaches and nauseas of the viewers. Um, yeah, can you imagine if you're wearing one of these uh, glasses and you're trying to do a uh, cooking tutorial? So you've got lots of food in front of you and you've got quick head movements and stuff and it's causing everyone to throw up. Yeah, I could see how that would be a, a big problem. <laughs> and Northern Exotics there, uh, obviously there's always going to be somebody who has a slightly alternative, illegal way of using the glasses. You could use them to record uh, cinema videos. And yes, but you wouldn't be able to see it yourself because presumably the glasses would have would shade them. Uh, happy uh, Friday to you, Ryan. Um, I'm going to out Ryan here. He's uh, one of the developers here at vidIQ. So uh, when you see stuff like the uh, real-time stats bar, the uh, uh, tag templates, or pinning your comments to YouTube videos, uh, he's one of the people responsible behind that. And uh, if you put us in an identity parade, you probably wouldn't be able to distinguish us because we look almost identical. We do often get referred to uh, mistakenly uh, when we have our... Uh, our meetings. I'm not sure if he's still here. He may have quickly made an exit there, uh, but there you are, uh, Ryan, one of the vidIQ developers. Uh, so, second news story that I wanted to point to you is uh, an interesting one that's come out from YouTube, actually, uh, and this goes along the lines of YouTube are boasting that they say now that 70% of all watch time is driven by its own recommendations. Now, in the past, when we look at um, the analytics on our YouTube videos, it tends to be about 40% of watch time comes from suggested videos. But now YouTube are saying that they're so good at recommending content, uh, it's not now driven by user search, but by the company's own masterful recommendations, which are powered by artificial intelligence and machine learning. Well, machine learning's got a lot to work to do when it comes to demonetization. Uh, but they're saying that suggested videos are so good these, these days, despite the fact that there's 400 hours of content uploaded to the site every minute, uh, it results in longer watch times. And today, the average viewing, system on, average viewing session on a mobile device, if you can believe this, lasts more than an hour, which seems incredible to me. Um, that you can watch for so long on a uh, small device, whether it be a tablet or a mobile phone. And just to quote uh, the Neil Moan here, we focus a lot in the, la in the last several years on machine learning and artificial intelligence to learn what our users like and make. So what do we uh, glean from that? Uh, well, what becomes so much more important here in terms of if 70% of views are coming from suggested views, then that means that you really need to be hot on your metadata, search engine optimization. So that's uh, tags, 
titles and descriptions, which uh, we try and rank and grade on vidIQ, the vidIQ video scorecard and in your uh, YouTube uploads and video info page. You need to give YouTube as much information as possible about what your video is about, how it's connected to the topic or genre at large, and who might be watching it in terms of... I've watched a video here from, let's say, um, Unbox Therapy, because somebody mentioned it in the chat. Unbox Therapy about the iPhone 10. Now I want to know how to um, send text messages for free on my iPhone 10. You need to make a video about that to make sure that somehow your video connects to Unbox Therapy. So Unbox Therapy is way up here with 50, uh, what is it, 7, 8 million subscribers. You're down here with maybe 15,000, 20,000 subscribers. You need to try and link your video in some way to Unbox Therapy. So maybe it appears on that suggested video column so that then you can go watch content there. Hope you found that interesting. Um, Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether you think YouTube does a good job of recommending videos to you and how have you found your videos being recommended in YouTube's suggested column. Amanda's allotment here is saying my suggested video is the highest of its browse feature. I'd like to know what uh, the percentages of your suggested videos. It usually, I would say... YouTube search and suggested video usually accounts for about 60 to 70% of most people's analytics, but there can be variations there. Uh, Dustin Vang says, a, a majority of my videos are in that suggested column. It improves my views largely later, yeah. Another a way to get your videos to appear more in the suggested column is to include your username or channel name or slogans that are specific to you in your tags. For example, Logan for Life would be a tag for uh, the Logan Brothers. If you include it in their um, tags and that would help them with their suggested video, not that they need that much help uh, with promoting their content, but when you're a smaller channel, it's those marginal gains that can really make a big difference in your uh, videos. Like we always put in our tags, vidIQ, more views, less time, vidIQ vision. That's one of the things I always include in all of our videos. Uh, Nilesh asks, what is a strategy to keep in mind so that videos are more suggested? Well, so, so that was the example I gave you there. Um, this depends a lot on the size of your channel. If you're a smaller channel, then you need to think about long tail keywords as much as you do the big popular words. So for example, again, we're gonna use iPhone as an example. iPhone 10, there's probably tens of millions of searches on that particular keyword. Now, you're, if your channel only has 3,000 subscribers, you're not gonna be able to compete with just the iPhone 10 tag, iPhone 10 review, iPhone 10 hints and tips, iPhone 10 tutorial, for example. They're not, going to be tags that you can really make a dent in. You need to find the long tail keywords, such as, for example, off the top of my head, iPhone 10 unboxing review tutorial. <laughs> now, I don't know if anybody's searching for that, but let's say that's a video about how to do a tutorial on unboxing your iPhone 10. There may be two or 300 people um, searching for that. Possibly. Uh, I probably need to come up with a better example. But those two or 300 people may find your video if you specifically target that niche area. And then that means that they're going to watch your video. I, I'm going to go very quickly on to some of my own experiences. I really made a name for myself doing specific videos on how to record your iPhone screen. So again, we're, we're at the top here with iPhone 10, iPhone 10 review, iPhone 10 tips and tricks, and then down towards the bottom here, iPhone 10, how to record your screen. And I had a lot of success on there and it built, there was a, a lot of people searching for that, but not many channels were providing content on it. So that really helped me establish myself as a tech channel when I was doing videos on that subject. Amanda's allotment has just come back here. 66% of uh, their views come from suggested videos. So that almost mirrors exactly what was said in that um, article, which is interesting. 
So if YouTube continues to get better with suggesting videos, you've got to get better with your SEO and the way you market, the way you pitch your videos to your viewers. Uh, so one more question. When you search Ender, Ender Keenan saying, when you search a topic, what is a competition thing uh, one of the tools based off of? I'm not sure which competition thing you're talking about. Uh, we've got a couple of um, competition tools, so you'd have to be a um, a little more specific there to answer your question. Sarah Kane here is saying that you use a keyword tool on top of vidIQ. Yeah, um, I, I, you meaning the keyword tool in Google for that? We've we've got a couple of tools ourselves called um, uh, Top Keyword. <coughs> excuse me. Top keywords, and also if you go to a channel, uh, let's see if I can quickly demonstrate this again. This will probably take a while because my computer will go at snail's pace, but let's see if I can do some quick demonstrations here for you. Um, go to my channel, doing things in the background here to get there. I'm going to show you a couple of tools here that can help you. Let's see if we can get to my channel and we should get there now. Okay, as you can see, it's taken a long time to load up the browser but when I eventually reach this video page one of the things that you can do is there's a button here called top keywords if you click that on a channel it will return all of the keywords the channel is using so if you find a channel that's doing particularly well in an area of your interest you want to look at their thumbnails, you want to look at the topics that they're covering, you want to look at the titles that they're using, but also you want to be looking at the tags that they're using. See if there's anything here that might help you. So as an example, we've, as I said, we've got vidIQ, vidIQ vision, more views, less time. Not many people searching that, 7,500, but we're going to dominate uh, that um, search. So we've got potentially seven and a half thousand free views there from monthly searches. Again, vidIQ, a bit more, 18,000 18, searches. And again, we will probably dominate that because we're making tons of videos on our products, of course. But we've got these uh, long tail keywords here as well. Grow your YouTube channel fast. Less than 1,500 searches, but how many people are producing videos on this content? Is, there some, is this an area where you could capitalize? Uh, get more views on YouTube. Higher here, uh, 250,000 searches. Competition score is low though, so it might mean that there's an opportunity here. Again, YouTube is underserved by videos. So that gives you a, a general understanding of uh, how to look at keywords in your videos. And maybe I should look at these areas in a lot more detail specifically in the future. Um, but I hope that's of some help to you there. Um, so, yeah, uh, by all means, take that advice uh, if you can. Okay, well, I've nearly run out of water and we'd be going 50 minutes now. So I think it's time for some channel audits. Now, this is going to be a pilot version of channel audits. I'm not sure how this is going to go. And we'll probably do some live streams where we just focus on channel audits, nothing else. So, uh, question here. The first person to get this question right means that uh, I'm going to do a channel audit for them. I've just got to think of a question. <laughs> so, can you tell me, so I've got it up on screen now, to the nearest thousand, first person to tell me this answer, gets a channel audit, how many subscribers does vidIQ have right now? First person to put in an answer, 
I will look at, I will give their channel a quick audit. Who's going to be first? First person to answer that with a correct number. How many subscribers does VidIQ currently have? We've got our winner. It's Chad Garber, 123,000. You are spot on. If you just tell me what your channel name is and that we can go and give a channel audit. And then I'll come and do another one. Well, so look at this. It took about 30 seconds for everybody to go and find out how many subscribers the channel had. And then bang, everybody came in. Okay, I've got your Chad Garber. Okay, let's see if I can find your channel first. Chad, and then we will do a channel audit on it. I'm hoping this is the right one. It looks as if it's the right one. Okay, let's bring this up here. So I think this is okay, Chad's hi, channel. My name is Chad. Um, so what, what we'll do first is... Let's have a look at the... Uh, let's try and just establish the channel. It's got um, 1,200 subscribers. And we have a channel banner. You don't have any social media links other than what must be a link to your website to learn how to play the guitar. And you have your message here, guitar lessons, cover songs, original music, performance, gear reviews, recording, tips. So one thing I might say here is that this is just a list, a pure list of uh, the channel. And we need to know a bit more about your message, like who should be watching and why. Um, so try and be a little more inspiring maybe with your message because that can really drive your channel as a whole. Uh, what else do we have here? We have the classic example of using popular uploads as your first playlist. Your first playlist should really sell your channel as much as possible. So what we do on vidIQ is, welcome to vidIQ, here's what we do here. So you might want to, on your channel, have your um, channel trailer, like your best video, and maybe a channel update or something that really sells your channel as to exactly what it does. Um, you could include um, some of your popular uploads, but sometimes your the videos that best reflect your channel don't necessarily uh, have the most views. Another thing to look at here is your thumbnails. Um, what I'm seeing here is that it's you've basically taken a thumbnail uh, a frame from your video and then put text over it. And I would say in this day and age, you, you can't really get away with this. Um, I can't really tell the story of the video here. It's very functional. Uh, lead guitar lesson, play like Tom Scholes. I again, I do. I apologize if I pronounce that. Uh, I pronounce that wrong. Um, but you might want to include some branding on your thumbnail and make it a lot less cluttered. Um, so if you can, maybe just take some shots of you smiling, holding a guitar, or something that's a little clearer with a, a like a bright background. And then you can include the text. There's nothing wrong with that because obviously with tutorials, it's good to tell people exactly what your video is about. But yeah, the thumbnails here, are, they're just cluttered and I think more work needs to be done on them. Now, if we jump into one of these videos, so let's take this video here. We'll wait for the vidIQ scorecard to come up. See if we can... Um, pick up anything else and I, I, I realize here I'm, I'm being a little over critical as well and I should be picking up some positive stuff as well um, and hopefully we can do that uh, so video length for example eight minutes is good uh, you tends to be a general consensus that videos of seven seven to ten minutes perform best on uh, YouTube it looks here as if you've got some um, good engagement on Facebook as well so maybe the video is being shared to Facebook which is good Let's have a look at your SEO. 
Uh, SEO is good in the sense that you've really thought about the tags that you're using. And um, there's a good selection of tags here. So you've got playing guitar, which is a, a general uh, key tag, but also lead guitar lessons for beginners. So that one's a lot more focused, a long tail keyword, which has a better chance of um, being searched for and found. And you've included your own like channel branded tags as well, which is good because they're going to rank as we can see here. Obviously not many people are going to be searching for them, but rank tags is better than no rank tags at all. Unfortunately, there's no comments here on the video. So there's no opportunity to engage with um, your community, but it has got 3000 views, but only three likes, which suggests to me that your videos have been embedded somewhere possibly, so they're not seen on YouTube, which makes it difficult to uh, engage with them. So I hope I'm giving you a lot of um, useful things to think about here. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's certainly good things to, to, be, to be seen here. One more thing I do want to look at is, because there's some videos which have got a lot of views. Uh, so there's quite, there's quite a, a staggered view count. We've got some which have got a couple of views, like 300, 500. Uh, so I would say here that you've got a very good view to subscriber ratio, like you're getting around about 50 to 70% view count versus subscribers, which is good. I'm not sure if all of those views are coming from subscribers, but that might be something to check on. And if I just sort by most popular, Let's see which are most popular ones. So consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. That's 16 minutes long and it got 61,000 views. Uh, I'd love to know why that is. Um, is that Was that a channel trailer that was maybe paid for? But anyway, looking at ones here, how to play Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit on guitar. Perfect example of a video which has had a bit of success. If I was you, um, two weeks ago, that one, I would double down on this video right now. So maybe pick out another um, Nirvana song, which is popular. I think obviously Teen Spirit was the most popular one, but you've probably got a couple of engaged viewers on this video now saying, ah, right, well, you taught me how to teach this. I would like to learn how to do a, play another uh, Nirvana song on the guitar or a, another similar song um, on, in the same genre. Uh, so that's where we, we want to double down. You've had success on a video. Don't leave that area. Find something else where you can maybe potentially uh, capitalize on it. Um, I can see here that you've been making videos for a long time as well. Five years ago, six years ago. So you've been working at this for a very long time. So again, credit there for uh, sheer perseverance in YouTube. So I hope you found that audit useful. Uh, I'd love to know if you guys found that um Audit useful and if you have any comments yourself now that we can see the chat by all means post your comments on uh, Chad Garber's um, channel and um, yeah if if you have any more feedback I'd, I'd love to hear it uh, so that we can help uh, you guys um, Bossa Zapanda is asking why don't you do super chat um, I may do super chat in the future. I'm not sure if it works with this live chat. Super chat is where you can uh, make a donation to the channel and your message appears at the top of the list for a while, which may help in looking at channel audits. But I don't really want to start charging people for free advice on YouTube at the moment. That's something that we do within our YouTube product. So uh, maybe something to think about in the future, but not just yet. Um, so... Um, uh, Ethan was saying he thinks the channel is good but needs more thumbnail work. Yeah, that's the thing I certainly picked up on. The, the thumbnails just don't identify the channel at all. It's like a almost like a random tutorial. And it, it doesn't make me feel as if I, I've, like, I've got this. I've, I've got this video on how to play Nirvana. Brilliant. But I'm not sure if I would go back to the channel or I would subscribe to it. Because um, I'm not sure what the branding was like there. We'd have to watch the video in more detail to see how the branding is done in the in the in the content itself but unfortunately we don't have time for that um thumbnails need a little bit of cleanup yeah so the general sense consensus seems to be thumbnails but it might be just because i focused on that a lot in uh, my channel audit 
Okay, I did say two channel audits, and we've gone over just an hour. We've just gone over an hour here, so we'll do we'll do one more channel audit. I've just got to think of a, another question now, um, which is going to be. Let's see. You have to spell this correctly. So, which channel did I just audit? First person to answer that. Which person did I just audit? Which channel? I will get to audit your channel. There we are. Dustin Vang was first. You get your channel audit. So, Dustin, can you let me know what your channel name is? And I will find it. And then, look at this. Chad Garber, you are the most famous man on YouTube right now because everybody's just saying your name. Like, if somebody entered this live stream now, they would just be saying, who's Chad, Chad Garber? So, you might be getting loads of promotion there. So, Dustin Vang, I need your channel name, um, if possible. <laughs> Unfortunately, Wi-Fi did not help uh, HD Gamer there. Right, Dustin Vang. Hopefully, that should come up straight away. I think this is you with 4,000 subscribers. Good evening, and welcome to Dustin. Okay, let's bring this up. Okay, welcome to Dustin Vang. Here we go then. I like this channel banner in one sense, and I'm not sure about it in another. Father, husband, YouTuber. It's very clear, very direct. You get an idea of why you might be interested in watching this uh, channel, because uh, if you're a father, or if you're a husband, or a YouTuber, those are some things that will connect with certain audiences. But why should we watch? What What is this channel about? And that's not necessarily mentioned in the channel banner. So we've kind of had the who should be watching, but we're not sure why sh why we should be watching. We've got two uh, pictures of cameras there, so that might be something to do with um, videotography. We're not sure. Uh, followers, followers at Dustin Vang. So you've got a website, but you don't have that website uh, posted on your links. But you do have social media um, links, which is good. Uh, let's have a look then at your channel. So we've got thumbnails here, which seem to be frames taken from the videos. Um, this one here, for example, how to set up a YouTube studio on a budget. We need really here probably some icons of dollar signs and down arrows or something that promotes the idea of a budget YouTube setup, maybe a YouTube logo. I don't think the thumbnail here is strong enough to represent what the video is about. Uh, it's you pointing to a wall and it doesn't really tell enough of a story here. This uh, thumbnail here is a little better, DIY Skateboard Project Part 2. So you obviously have the um, you have the uh, skateboard in the thumbnail, but again, it's a little hidden away from the thumbnails. So something I to probably say about thumbnails is in general, and um, people are astonished when I sometimes say this that some YouTubers spend as long making their thumbnails as they do their videos. I probably spend about half an hour to an hour on the vidIQ thumbnails, and I'm still learning a lot about how to do thumbnails. Um, but it's the one chance you have that one freeze frame to sell your video to the audience, and people need to spend a little bit more time on those, on, on that. Uh, again, and, uh, so DIY electric skateboard under $150, part one. It's interesting to see here that this video seems to have got a lot more views than the part two. I am not a fan of doing uh, several parts to videos because it tends to be if uh, people are, are lukewarm about part one, there's such a drop off to part two. And then people, when people see part two, it's like, oh, so I have to watch part one first. Um, that's not always the case, but I've, I've found that in my personal experience that doing multi-part videos doesn't tend to work that well. Um, but by all means, you can try it. Let's see then. So you have several different playlists 
again, I would advise having a playlist which sells off, sells your uh, most successful videos or uh, what your video is about. Here we go, popular uploads. Now, if we just look at the popular uploads here, we've got Best Drone Runner, The Batman Fidget Spinner Toy, Amazon Echo Dot, Best Drone Ever, uh, Mavic Pro. I actually want a Mavic Pro. I might get one this year. But from these popular videos, can you tell what this channel is about? Is it about tech? Is it about drones? Or is it about whatever's popular at the moment, such as fidget spinners? And I think that's where we you need to identify your channel a bit more, who should be watching and why. But again, popular upload playlist can skew that a little bit. What I'm going to do now is just go into the video section a little more and go to most popular so we'll get a better idea. So we've got best drones, more. So here we are, two videos about Batman fidget spinners. Uh, it looks as if you did uh, double down a little bit on the bad Batman fidget spinner. So you had one really successful one, 52,000 views. And then you tried to follow it up a month later with a, another one that got 2,000 views. So again, good work there on trying to f uh, follow up on popular content. Um, and yeah, again, you've, you've done the same thing with the best drone 3D solo. So two videos there, most popular ones in the top five are on the drone one. Um, and another one here on the Mavic, Mavic Pro. So maybe you, and that was three weeks ago. So if you can, uh, Dustin Vang, do more videos about drones. That seems to be the, um, the influence I'm getting here from what I can quickly see and maybe change one of these pictures here to a drone or include something a little more drony in your uh, video title. Because that's kind of something that you need to do when you're a smaller channel. You need to identify a niche and dominate it and then you can branch out more as, uh, as you build a bigger following. Let's jump into one of these videos now. We'll look at the Mavic Pro one. see what we can find out from the video scorecard. So this is what I'm more likely see. Um, you've got 200, and, so the likes to dislikes ratio is fantastic. It's maybe not that many likes for a 20,000 view video. I would suspect that's because it's viewers who aren't subscribed to your channel, so they're not as engaged or encouraged to like the video. Are you asking people to like your videos in the, in your video? I know that sounds like a really cheesy thing to do, but sometimes what is there to lose? It only takes two or three seconds to ask. And when there are fans and committed hardcore viewers, they will do it just because you ask them to. Um, but again, that's not for everybody's taste. And again, another thing here, you've only got eight comments on a 20,000 view video. So there's some curious things going on there. I don't know quite how there's been so many views on it. Again, has it been em embedded somewhere? Um, it would be interesting to know why that is. Uh, but look, we've got, so here are some decent tags here. Uh, DJI Mavic Platinum Review rank 17 and Mavic Platinum Review rank 20. So you're getting on the first page of YouTube searches. So you're doing a good job with your um, tags, uh, like best drone ever. That's a, a, a general, a, a, quite a general one. But then we've got some really a specific long tail ones, such as DJI Mavic Pro Platinum Test Flight. So, so, so there's a, a mixed bag of good stuff there and not so good stuff. Uh, again, you've only got a few comments, but it looks as if you've loved some of these comments and like them. So again, engaging with your community where you can. So that's my views on uh, Dustin Vang. I would love to hear your views on his channel and hopefully that can help you out. Maybe look at some more, um, droning stuff and, uh, I drone as well. I have a Phantom 3 at the moment, but I'm thinking of upgrading, but I really do, um, I really do enjoy uh, using uh, drones. 
so um, you've you've probably asked loads of questions there, Dustin, but unfortunately I couldn't see them. The view time is really low. It was a long video, wasn't it? Twenty minutes. Uh, was it twenty minutes? Let me just check. Uh, Eleven minutes. Sorry. Uh, so mm, you might want to see why the view time was low. Are people getting? Are people being driven to the video but then switching off immediately? That might be uh, something to consider. So uh, yeah, there we are. Uh, Ethan should say maybe find ways to view more active viewers. Uh, what's the best APK for thumbnails? Not sure what you're asking there, Chris. Uh, yeah, amazing like to dislike um, ratio. Um, so yeah, there we are. Uh, now, I would love to do a channel, another channel review, but uh, unfortunately I'm out of time. I've got to, uh, I have to make my exit in about three minutes. Uh, as we've overrun, I thought this live stream might last half an hour, and in the end, it's lasted an hour and uh, 15 minutes. But just before we go, I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, this live stream. Did you enjoy it? Were there things that didn't go quite so well? What would you like to see um, elsewhere? I think what I'm generally going to do is this Hangout live stream, where it's more casual and Maybe I'll do less news stories, less videos, and just uh, respond to comments as they come in. And then I'll do more structured ones where I do a presentation on something like keywords or playlists or comments as I did before uh, Christmas. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts here. Um, so, Chad, I'm sure you thought it was awesome because you got a channel audit. Um, uh, Bosna, you want me to do Super Chat next time. Um Good feedback. This helped with a few questions I had cut into my filming day, but that's okay. Sorry about that kitchen confidence, uh, but I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, love the live stream. Do it more often. Again, again, again. Okay. Uh, so it's all looking uh, fairly positive there. Uh, Ethan saying, I liked it. I just hope that in the future you can maybe audit some of your really active viewer channels. Yeah, I think what I'll probably have to do is maybe post out on uh, Twitter uh, or Facebook and say, if you want your a channel be audit then uh by all means uh let me know rather than just doing it slap dash in the middle of a, a live stream or super chat might be a way to do it but again i'm not really sure about um charging uh, people um so uh there we are uh thank you very much for uh taking part in this live stream i do really appreciate it it really heartens me to know that there's so many of you uh taking part in these live streams and obviously we're here uh, to help you get more views in less time, whether it be through the vidIQ tool, which if you haven't already downloaded it, then I'm sure there's a link in the description. And obviously through the advice here we give on vidIQ uh, YouTube channel. It just leaves me one more thing that I have to do now, which is toward the MVP of the live stream, most valuable poster or MVC, most valuable commenter. And I think there's only one person it can go to in this particular live stream, and that's Dustin Vang, who... Um, was who's helped me with the moderating of comments on this video and he got the answer right first which meant that we could audit his channel so he provided 15 minutes worth of content for this live stream so thank you very much to you Dustin Vang I really do appreciate it and thank you to all of you again uh, Cooking Man Boy for being here from the very start and a fantastic uh, username to Ethan again Ethan Shah who has been here from the start and I really uh, helped as well thank you very much and I'm going to say Enjoy that Friday feeling. No doubt I'll be back with a live stream next week. Enjoy the rest of your video making day. Bye for now. Oh, I forgot to press.